Travel within the U.S. is expected to go up 9% this Labor Day weekend compared with last year. According to AAA, thanks to lower gas prices, greater airline supply, the TSA is expecting about 17 million passengers at airports. Joining us now to walk us through those numbers, Brian Kelly, the Point Sky founder. Brian, thank you for being here. So it sounds like record crowds, but potentially lower prices if you're willing to brave them. Absolutely. We're seeing prices down 5% to last year and down 19% versus 2019. So it's a good time to be a traveler. And even looking forward to September, the average airfare is about $240 domestically, which is down about 10% from last year. Can we take a step back and remind our viewers what's driving these price declines? Is it uh, more muted demand or that supply capacity uh, that I mentioned in the intro that uh, just is kind of writing itself out with the post-pandemic uh, kind of trends that we saw? Yeah, demand is really strong. Consumers want to travel. We saw 3 million passengers screened over the July 4th holiday. But the big reason why prices are dropping is an increase in supply. Airlines have flooded the market with new planes, bigger planes, and uh, increasing capacity on really popular routes. So planes are full. But because there's so much extra supply, prices are really low. Uh, comparatively, last summer, I'm currently in Ibiza, Spain. Last summer, business class airfares were $5,000 and up. This year, I got a first class airfare, 4,200 in first class on British Airways, which was shocking shocking to me, peak August season. So the and airlines Brian, are discounting. Uh, you know the haters are going to come out and say, if Brian <laughs> Kelly flying first class to Europe, I want to point out that Brian Kelly is about 6'7". How tall are the bro I'm is, six, I'm seven, tall. therefore it's a, medical, it's a medical necessity for me to fly first. <laughs> like, literally, I'm a pretty tall guy, and I meet the guy, I'm like, dude, like, you ain't flying coach. Uh, I've been to a... I've been to a <laughs> like, you can't... Physical torture. By the way, you're, like, all contorted... Uh, Brian, it's weird. I've been to airports lately that have been just packed, and I've been to airports lately that have been shockingly, bizarrely empty. I can't figure out the travel patterns right now. And I'm like you, I've been on a plane pretty much every week this year. Yeah, you know what? It, it mostly is related to the weather. So yesterday there was uh, fog in San Francisco. There were 500 cancellations, and that's when things really back up in airports. But when things run smoothly, I've got to hand it to the TSA. They're processing the lines really well. Airlines have staffed up. So when there's no external factors throwing things out of whack, airports run pretty smoothly. So, uh, but the numbers show, you know, this, this weekend will be probably the busiest Labor Day travel weekend ever. Now, you are the points guy, which makes me think of credit cards. What's the interplay typically between credit cards and travel in the sense of if rates are going lower, do you think that we will see more people inclined to spend on travel? Do they usually float those balances on their credit cards? Absolutely. You know, the credit card market, you know, people joke that airlines are banks these days because they're selling billions of dollars worth of miles to the credit card companies. The credit card companies are still, as their uh, quarterly results uh, have been showing, uh, very doing very well. So, you know, you've got to play the loyalty game uh, in order to win at travel these days. Um, and yeah, consumers are now doing more pay buy now, pay later with airlines. We saw that with consumer products. Now we're seeing that into travel. So consumers, even if they don't have the money today, will put those purchases because especially the younger generation, they value experiences uh, over, you know, luxury items. Brian, how has the equation changed if it has at all in terms of lodging and, you know, whether it's going to be Airbnb or Verbo versus hotels. I mean, in a time when that's very promotional, when you maybe are going to be using things like points, it would seem like hotels uh, get more attractive. I'm just wondering if that has shifted around. No, I mean, there was a recent article, you know, that the $1,000 a night hotel room yeah. is, uh, I think there are twice as many hotels as five years ago that are now on average $1,000 a night. You know, in Europe, it's common now, Italy, prime places, you're paying two to $3,000 a night for luxury hotels. Of course, that's in the upper echelon, but in general, lodging costs have gone up dramatically. And this is where I encourage people, mm. don't just focus on getting cheap airfare. Airfare is pretty cheap. You may just want to buy that and then use those loyalty points for the lodging, which can get expensive really quickly. That's a really good tip. Is it changing the way and where people do travel? I mean, if these $1,000 a night hotels tend to cluster in big cities, are people opting for more rural vacations? Abs uh, kind absolutely. Of under the radar spots? 
Yeah, look, we saw in Barcelona this summer the locals are squirting tourists with water guns to get them to leave. And I encourage people, don't just go to the popular places. Instead of Lake Como, go to Lake Garda, which is a local favorite, just as beautiful and at the price for hotels. So I encourage people, think outside of those big city centers and also travel in the shoulder season. The fall in Europe is spectacular and even cheaper than what we're seeing now, especially over Thanksgiving. Airfares now in business class are less than $3,000 round trip for the Thanksgiving travel week. So if you didn't get to go to Europe this summer, going over our Thanksgiving holiday is a great time to visit Europe, not too cold and great pricing.